Hey, this video is about a lot more than just animation. There's a lot to get into, but we'll start with this. Welcome, I hope you enjoyed that piece. That's something that I spent about a month creating, totaling about maybe 200 to 300 hours roughly, uh, just for that 30 second piece, doing a whole bunch of mixed media stuff. And so in this video, I wanna go through some of the behind the scenes, share some of the footage and the process and what the piece means to me moving forward for future pieces and uh, my future creative endeavors. So let's get into it. I spend over 200 hours on a 30 second piece, let alone something so arbitrary like Bubbles. Well, to start, I had no idea that it would actually end up taking this long, but I had fun and learned quite a bit throughout the entire process. And so that's what I kind of want to focus on here. And it really comes down to my approach towards this piece, which is something I hope to take for future pieces as well. And it's built on a very simple concept I learned from my friend, Paul keep it simple and make it work. As a fellow animator, we talk a lot about the visual medium, but ironically, this actually came from a conversation that we had about going to the gym. There's a million different ways that you can work out, a lot of different machines and routines that you can follow. But from my experience, sticking to ones that I'm supposed to do has led me to starting and stopping a dozen different times over the years, not getting as far as I want to. And it's only when I started doing what I actually like when I found a consistent balance and it stopped being a drag to go. The point in bringing up this example isn't to fixate on gym life. Instead, I realized that I've had the same problem with my personal creative endeavors for years. I've treated every personal project like it has to be this most meaningful, in-depth, complex piece for it to be worth it to even try, when in turn, that just stopped me from even attempting anything. It was only ever an impossible task from the start because I was absolutely unable to simplify any of the ideas to make them actually work. And this is why I spent so many hours on the arbitrary subject, Bubbles. I was inspired by a random song I found on Artlist when I was looking through it and just ran with it. I wanted to try my hand at macro videography, making a bubble completely from scratch in After Effects, and trying 3D animation again, which I haven't done in a very long time. Three pretty basic reasons, all of which I could approach one by one. Any problem that might come up, I can solve without getting overwhelmed and losing the plot. In my head, it changed from what's the right way to make this shot to what's the most fun way to make this work by any means possible. And so in essence, I made it work for me. The main setup here for the camera is this. I have the ZV-E1 on a tripod with two extension tubes. This just allows the lens to get a little bit closer and stay in focus. I then have a 24 to 105 extended all the way out to 105. And then at the end, the threaded filter. This is just like a 12 euro extra macro filter that magnifies even more. Pretty simple setup actually, not too bad. Here we have the actual soap. So this is just laundry detergent and water and dish soap and a little bit of glycerin as well because I found that online. A straw for blowing bubbles. What I'm actually doing is I'm just filming from here and then I sit here and I manually hold this and sweep the light over. So I'll show what that looks like now, but I get some pretty cool shots. No. There we go. Let's see if we can get something. No. Part of this is the best colorful soapy part is right at the beginning when you blow. So it's hard to readjust because by the time I readjust, I lose a lot of the color and it gets a different kind of shot. So I gotta get lucky with the placement of these bubbles. Look at this. Look at this one. How's this? Oh, well, oh, there it goes. A uh, little update. It is a few days after I shot the original bubble stuff and I reviewed it on my computer and actually found some issues with it. There was some dust on my sensor, which caused some problems, especially in macro. All of the stuff I shot, I'm completely scrapping. It's completely gone, but I'm actually not too bothered by it because I actually had a lot of fun shooting this. And also I'm now improving on the stuff that I learned from the last time. So I have a new mixture. I've learned some new techniques now after doing a little bit more research 
and I think some of the footage I got now is a lot better. Additionally, I found making smaller bubbles rather than the giant bubbles makes it easier when I hold the light above the bubble for the light to fully properly wrap around it, which makes for some better fully colored shots instead of some gaps. Um, and I'll show some examples of like some of the gaps that were missing from the first takes. Honestly, I don't think this is a waste at all. This is kind of just part of the process with creative work. You know, you try things out. I'll show some of the first takes right now, like when I just first turned on the camera for the first time with the bubbles, I thought I wasn't gonna get anywhere near what I ended up getting. And then, you know, of course you've seen some of the nicer shots. Anyway, I'm gonna keep shooting since I have the setup. We're gonna try shooting some sparkling water and maybe some like Prosecco or something. We'll see, just to get variety. Try some different glassware. Oh wait, this is dangerous. This is so much better. Look at this, look. Yeah, wow, look at that, that's so sick. Look at this, look at this greatness, look at this. Oh, it turned out so well. That texture is beautiful, that's so nice. Yes! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. When you get some good shots with like budget stuff, like whatever you find, yeah. buy some really cheap sparkling water for this, this is great. This is great, this is what it's about. Unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, the fear of failure is my number one. I wanna create art that I'm proud of and work with artists that I admire, but with that comes much greater exposure to the potential of letting others down. And not just any people though, artists I hold in the highest regard, disappointed with what I create, that's mortifying to me. It's a destructive line of thinking and one that I definitely don't recommend, yet it's been enough to stop me in my tracks for way too long. There's the flip side to this though. Just sticking with the safe status quo is only a temporary solution as much as I used to believe it wasn't. Early on in my career, I had this idea that one day I'd have endless creative freedom and I'd be doing projects I've always wanted to do by just putting in my due diligence and working with clients for a few years until it all of a sudden magically appeared. And to some degree, this was true. My repeat clients have been lovely and treated me well and I've learned a lot about the industry while being able to grow my knowledge as an animator. But that's just the thing. That cycle was only further cementing my role as an animator that works for other people's projects rather than Sky the Creative collaborating with artists. There's a pretty big difference between the two. Okay, great. So I realized I wanna make a change, but it's not so simple. And in this shift, my selfishness was exposed to me. How can I expect to work with my favorite artists if I haven't even put in the work on my own stuff? And the reality is if I wanna to come to the table as an equal with them, I have to play the part and that's entirely on me. I have to break the cycle on my own if I really wanna reach those goals. And if I don't, did I ever really want it bad enough? With that, the fear of failure is still there, but evolved. I may still be afraid of letting people down, but I've recently become much more afraid of forever sitting in the shadow of my own potential. And that's not something I'm willing to live with. All right, I have the song. I've done some macro shots that I really like. And I also have this intro idea that I was messing with in After Effects. It's this completely procedural bubble. I have all of this finished. I did this off camera while I was still kind of in the testing phase. I got a little carried away and ended up just doing the whole thing. It's pretty intensive because there's quite a few layers. This is the unstretched version of the bubble without any color. And then I have a Colorama layer here with the color palette of the bubble and just a whole lot of messing around with masks and turbulent displays. Some extra stuff like CC Sphere is like the main driving force that gives it the bubble shape. Things like a rim light as well. It was so many iterations of just testing and testing. This was one of the early tests of just like messing around. So you can see <laughs> kind of how far it's come. And this looks pretty cool, but not at all like the macro shots that I ended up using in the actual final. And what's pretty cool is like, look, if I drag and move this, you can actually see it dragging and moving on the bubble. This is just the bubble without any extra animation. It's just kind of like this settling look. But what I wanna do is kind of do like this camera pass over the bubble to the intro text and I'll do like a hard cut. I have some ideas. Now I have enough shots that I could start to lay out and see the direction I wanna take it. We'll, we'll get to that right after this. I wasn't actually planning to record anymore at this setup, but I have been sitting here trying to figure out how I wanna animate the bubble text and nothing's really coming to me. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of show this because this is part of the process of just like sitting and watching this two second section of the loop over and over until maybe something hits me. But I might have to take a break and come back to it with a fresh brain or something like that. We'll see, we'll see. Finally got a version finished. I figured out something for the text animation and I've actually started laying out some notes for the next shot, some ideas. I'm kind of winging it honestly with a lot of this, just figuring out what works where. This isn't a typical project, I guess you could say, because normally storyboarding would have a clear idea up front. But yeah, the next thing is just moving on to actually building stuff in 3D. So we'll see how that goes. Part of my path to reaching this mindset was discovered during my summer travels. 
I had just finished teaching a five week animation course after having spent the better part of a year developing it. It ended up surpassing my expectations and I actually really enjoyed meeting and working with all of the students. Yet part of me still felt hollow, not because of the experience of running the course, but because I had inadvertently been using it as an excuse to stay distracted from exploring my own personal creativity. I'd put so much pressure on the condition of create a successful course without much thought beyond it. It was akin to a dog chasing a car. What does it actually do when it catches one? Having checked off all the boxes for what success meant at the time, yet still feeling lost on what to do next, I was the dog having caught the car I spent a year chasing. Without my knowledge of this at the time, my decision to venture abroad was met with a sense of turbulence. It became a constant cycle of questioning my true motives. In this, a challenge arose as the more desperately I sought answers, the more restless I grew. Amidst my enjoyment of being with friends and new experiences, I found myself locked in this relentless struggle plagued by my inability to find that elusive golden answer. So as autumn approached and my travels ended without answers, an unexpected opportunity arose. My friend Valentin, planning to spend a few weeks in his native Austria, extended an invitation for me to stay with him and his family. And having never been, and a growing sense that I had exhausted all other avenues for finding solace, I decided to go with a single guiding principle, to enter the experience with no expectations and a willingness to embrace everything and anything that came my way. And in this approach, I was able to crack something. By putting nothing at stake the way that I had been all summer, there was no room for disappointment. Even though I didn't realize it then, everything became simpler. My primary focus became the joy of capturing moments with my camera and forming connections with the people I encountered. I still kept looking for answers, but in a way that really let me see them on their own terms. And it was there that I started to grasp my new approach, the very one I'd use for the bubble piece. Finally at the stage of starting to get out some test renders, just clay renders without any textures and really, really low samples, just so I could see how it fits in the edit because I found that some of the frames at 4K were taking like 10 minutes. I'm gonna have to figure out how to optimize or I don't know, come up with some solution. But for now, just rendering out the simulation, testing it and uh, gonna drop it in Resolve and see how it plays through. Wrapping up for the day on some of this. Still prepping the animation and mainly focusing on the lighting right now and trying to get the staging to look right. It's actually working better than I thought. It really does feel like riding an old bike because I haven't touched doing any renders or stuff like this in at least over a year, year and a half, something like that. So for now, it's just sitting here and waiting for a few hours until this is done and then starting the next shot and doing the same thing until we're done. I just got home from being out all day and I had the render running for some of the most intensive frames of the 3D render and I realized that it just decided not to work. So that's three hours down the drain, but that's just kind of how it goes, as frustrated as I am. I fixed it and started it again. It's at, I think like 18 to 19 minutes per frame, just because I need to pump out the samples for this, just so it looks really clean, which is probably an issue with my actual lighting, but it is what it is, it's fine. I'm doing this in chunks and I'll get it done over the next few days. Like whenever I have time, just let my computer run and do its thing, part of the process. I wanna wrap things up with a few actionable pieces that have helped me and this acts as a reminder for myself in the future, but maybe you can get something from it too. Don't fall into the trap of overcomplicating projects or setting unreachable standards. Remember that keeping it simple doesn't mean sacrificing quality. As an example, one of the first things I did when I got home from Vienna was sit down and make a montage from the footage I shot over the summer, which ended up being my A Summer Lost video. Something I used to love doing when I was a lot younger, but completely lost touch with. And in that process, I reconnected with the creative side I had been missing for so long, focusing on the simple fun of just doing. Understand that trying to force answers or success can only lead to frustration. The more you can reduce them in your head, the more room you have to appreciate whatever the outcome may be. As a creative on a journey, it's crucial to develop what I like to call artistic resilience. This resilience is all about your ability to face challenges head on and turn setbacks into stepping stones towards progress. As an example, from this piece, I had plans to add hand-drawn animation, but ultimately decided against it. Instead, I'm saving that learning process for a future piece. And so this way, I still have plans to explore it while making sure that this change in direction doesn't derail my entire creative train. All finished, sound design completed. I'm really happy with it and I'm getting live reactions right now on FaceTime. So let's see what they think. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that face. Okay, first reaction is like, what? real what's not doubt took you that long my god it was amazing if that's all fake no there's there's macro shots with my camera it's a mix of, of everything there's 3d renders footage after effects i love it i think it's amazing yeah i'm, I'm really happy with it 
There's a lot of compositing that you don't even notice or that's like not yeah. specifically yeah. part of it. Pretty cool, huh? I'm gonna play it again. Okay. Okay, wait. Third time watching, okay. <laughs> wow, it's it's you it's rich. I mean you're <laughs> it's like you're in this like world. You're taking me into this fantastical world. I, wow, you're I, this I, is like your sixth time watching. <laughs> You know what? This makes me... I die to see the behind the scenes. Oh, don't worry. You're in it right now. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank you. That's all for now. Thank you for watching this far, and I'll see you soon.